to you watching East Midlands today. Tonight, struggling to survive. Hi, and welcome to Wednesday's East Midlands Today with me, Elise Chamberlain. Good evening. Tonight, on the day inflation has risen to its highest level for 30 years, market traders in Nottingham say they're struggling to survive. The National Market Traders Federation says the indoor market in the Victoria Centre has been neglected by the local authority and left in a semi-derelict state. It's calling for more investment from the council to attract shoppers back to the market. Emily Anderson has this report. Welcome to Notty Council and this I'm afraid is the stark reality. Stall after stall is empty and that's the concern for market traders at the front. If they're not filled, it's easier said than done I think at least. They, they certainly do want that investment and especially after today's news about prices rise, rising. Now the UK inflation rate has risen to 7% which is the highest rate since 1992 and that's 30 years ago believe it or not. I'm still struggling to believe that that is 30 years ago. Um, so if you have a bottle of milk for example and it costs you a pound it, it could now cost you £1.7 so that's inflation of 7%. Um, now coincidentally research has been done by um, some academic at the University of Leeds about markets and the place they have in our towns and cities. Now, as part of their research, the research they've interviewed lots of people about their, their shopping habits and they found that if done correctly, markets can actually thrive in towns and cities. Um, they can create a community hub and increase that all-important footfall. The market traders are just worrying about their future. Really struggling. And we've heard from people, they, they remember the market being bustling and sort of saying, I only used to go there for certain things. It, it's sad to see how it's sort of declined. But, I mean, it's run by the City Council. What have they had to say about all of this? Uh, well, unfortunately, no one from the City Council was available to talk to us on camera today, but they have sent us a statement through, so I'll, I'll give that to you. It says, we've invested in the market over the years to improve the environment for traders and shopping alike, including improvements to the meat and the fish market. Market. Uh, they go on to say that the council's been running the market at an annual trading loss since the situation was made worse by COVID. So unfortunately, the dreaded COVID strikes again. Pandemic back again, isn't it? Thank you very much, Emily. Next tonight, the family of a man from Newark who's fighting in Ukraine says he's told them he will have to surrender to... The last she heard from him about 24 hours ago or just over that now was this phone call uh, telling her that he was preparing to surrender, that that was the last option left for his unit, that they had no ammo left, no food. And now at the time it appeared that his leaders in his unit were speaking to Russian officials and it appeared they were preparing for a sort of negotiated surrender. But that's the last anyone has heard from Aiden, so nobody really knows what has ha happened next, whether he is now a prisoner of war. Uh, it would actually doing in Ukraine to begin with, Emma, what took him out there? Well, he's got an interesting background. This isn't his first time in a conflict zone uh, because a number of years ago, he was one of a number of people from the UK who decided to go out to Syria and who fought against ISIS uh, with the Kurdish uh, armed group called the YPG. And he did this for a couple of years, had experiences there. Uh, when the war in Syria wound down, he and some others moved on to Ukraine. They went there. Uh, there were already a number of battalions in Ukraine that took on foreign volunteers. But Aidan very much made his life in Ukraine. He met a girl, his fiance now. He was, in fact, due to get married uh, very soon and then joined the Ukrainian military. And he passed out as a Marine and he's been there well, we just don't know what has become of him. He hasn't been answering his phone since he made those phone calls. But, you know, information trickles out slowly in a war zone. Well, we can only imagine how worried his family are about him. Thank you very much for speaking to us, Emma. An inquest has opened into the death of a former chief constable who was found dead shortly after retiring to a resident. The care quality of the Exchequer should resign over their party gate fines. Amber Valley MP Nigel Mill spoke out after it emerged yesterday that Boris Johnson and Rishi Sunak had been issued with £50 fixed penalty notices for breaching lockdown rules. But another Tory from this region says it's time to move on. Simon Hare has a Facebook page and we can bring you a taste of what some of you have been saying now. Rain Osborne said Hilton House wanted to count how many herons they had on site. They had to come up with a bright idea as our environment correspondent Sally Bowman has been finding out. Professional ecologist and drone operator Andrew Chick is on a mission. 
He's been asked by the National Trust at Belton House in Lincolnshire to find out whether their local heron population is taking off. Drones have now become so small, so quiet um, and so easy to use that as long as they're used in a responsible manner they allow us to monitor the population of birds here at Belton um, and we can see whether the work that was being done is working as we want it to. The heron population in the UK has been mostly stable or increasing, but not everywhere. Heron numbers have been dropping. They were able to see whether the nests were inhabited. And what they found was astonishing. When we got the drone and we got above the tree line, we were amazed to find that we got 11 pairs, showing that the work here is really having an impact. The nest structure that herons build is colossal, and they withstand incredible winds at the top of those trees. So this gives us an indication of how successful the rearing of the chicks are and what number of them will actually come to fledge. What's made the difference is the work the Trust has done down at the river to support the entire ecosystem. On the opposite bank you can see um, some fence posts that have been driven into the, to the riverbed and then we placed bundles of heather sticks so they'll be in amongst that and feeding. And all of that's good for the birds, not least the herons? Exactly, yeah. Herons with their voracious appetites aren't popular with garden pond owners or fitters to Belton House shouldn't have to look far to see the success of this wildlife experiment for themselves. Sally Bowman, BBC East Midlands Today, Lincoln. Natalie's here and there's lots of prep for a big game I believe isn't there? Yes a huge European night and that's where we're starting with Leicester City because tonight they're in the Netherlands ahead of their huge Europa Conference League quarter-final against Dutch giants PSV Eindhoven. It's the second leg of the tie that's finally posed after the first game finished goalless at the King Power Stadium last week and today before they talk to the skies Charlie Slater spent the day with the Foxes in the table and could meet again in next week's playoff quarter-final. Face-off tonight is at half past seven. Love the ice hockey, always exciting at the arena there. And that is all your sports. Bye. And it does Elise Chamberlain, BBC East Midlands Today. Well, good luck to anyone taking on the DIY. I'm going to leave it. It's really not my strong suit. What about you, Anna? I have to say, actually, Elise, in my house, I'm the one that is OK at DIY. In fact, I don't let anyone else do it, to be honest. But weather-wise, well, it's not looking bad, is it? Over the next few days, as we head towards the Easter weekend itself, we are expecting the temperatures to climb. And it does look like it will be dry and settled across all four days. Now, today, there was some sunshine, but wow, if you got caught in some of those showers, you certainly knew about it. Some really heavy showers out there, particularly this afternoon. Now they have mostly cleared away now, so it is an improving story as we go into the evening. Tomorrow morning, then a little bit of mist and fog around first thing, but then a dry, settled and sunny day. And we'll start to notice those temperatures also creeping up a touch or two. So low pressure clearing away now and high pressure beginning to build in and that will sit itself across the east of the UK as we go through Thursday and Friday and into the weekend. What it does is it stops the weather fronts moving in from the west. So we are actually sitting in the best place to see the best of the sunshine and the warmth as we head through the rest of the week. So at the moment, most of those showers have cleared out to the east. It's leaving us now with some sunshine before dark, but then clear skies for much of the night. Now, temperatures will drop away tonight, perhaps not quite as low as other nights, five or six degrees Celsius as a minimum, and we'll see some mist and fog developing as well first thing tomorrow morning. But that will lift up and break, allowing for some sunny spells as we go through the morning and into the afternoon. It looks like it should be a dry day. Temperatures up at 18 degrees Celsius. If you're heading to the seaside, not looking bad there either. Right, Friday, good Friday. Mist and fog again first thing. Again, some sunshine, broken cloud, however. Temperatures, though, creeping up to 19. I wouldn't be surprised if we got to 20 degrees Celsius on good Friday. High pressure does start to edge away, though, as we head into the weekend. It will mean a little bit more in the way of cloud as we go through Saturday and Easter day itself. The potential for a little bit more unsettled at the start of next week. Gosh, high temperatures though, that's exciting. Uh, that's all from the 6.30 team. Thank you for joining us for now. I'll be back with your late news at half ten. See you then.